Everybody's rolling. Scene one, take three. So many takes. Now we get this right. Hello and welcome to the set. My name is Malachi Ray Rempen of Keen Bean Studio, and in this video we're going to learn how to play Roll Camera, the filmmaking board game. This is a one to four player cooperative game. It takes about 90 minutes to play. By the way, if instead of ingesting rules first, you prefer to learn how to play by just playing the game, check out the Film School walkthrough at this URL or at the link in the description of this video. It'll walk you through your first two turns and sort of explain all the rules along the way. But if you just want a rules video, keep watching. Now before we start, note that your copy of the game will look slightly different than this one I have here. That's because this is a pre-production copy that's close to what you have, but if you notice little differences, don't worry, your copy is the final superior one. I'm also using the clapper box version here, and I did make a normal box version, which might be the one that you have instead. Only the box itself and the insert are different. The game components in both versions are identical. Okay, let's set up the game. First, put the main game board in the center of the table. Then, choose or randomly give each player one of the six player boards. You can choose any of them. You don't necessarily have to have someone playing as the director, for example. And you can use either side. Each side is functionally identical, except for this player privilege, which is just for fun and doesn't affect the actual gameplay. Put your player board in front of you. If you set up for more than one player, give each player a player board. Give each player the two-sided player aid card that matches their player board. These are the script cards, and they come in two halves, top and bottom. Together, they form your movie script. Shuffle each separately and randomly draw five of each, top and bottom, and place them in stacks in the script area of the main game board. The remaining script cards can be placed back in the box. These are the problem cards, and this is the problem symbol. Shuffle these and place the deck in its spot above the board. This part on top of the board is called the problem queue. Place the three block tokens in a stack next to the problem deck. These are the scene cards, and they are double-sided. The side with a sketch drawing is the storyboard side, and the full color reverse side that looks like a film strip is the completed scene that goes in the editing room after you've shot it. But we haven't done that yet, so shuffle all the cards together storyboard side up. This part of the game board is called the storyboard. Place the whole scene deck, storyboard side up, in the top slot indicated by this deck icon. Then, draw two scene cards into the slots below them. These are the idea cards, and this is the idea symbol. Shuffle these and deal three idea cards to each player. They will keep these cards in their hand, visible to them but hidden from the other players. Then, place the rest of the idea deck in its spot below the board. This area next to the idea deck is called the to-do list, and we'll get to that in a moment. These are the production company cards. They are new scenarios to play with once you're familiar with the game. So for your first time, we recommend setting these aside. These are the 12 set piece tiles. Mix them up and place them in two face-up stacks of six each in this area marked set pieces on the main board. This is the quality track that measures the quality of your film. And this little guy is the quality marker. Put it on the space marked start. These are the budget and schedule dials. During the game, you'll use these to track the film's budget and schedule, as you might have guessed. If you flip the dials over, you'll be able to set the difficulty of your game depending on the number of players. We're gonna say there are two players and we'll play on normal difficulty. So we'll set the dials like this. You can see this has set the budget to 12 and the schedule to 10. Whichever player last made a movie is the starting player, or choose one at random. Give them the six crew dice and the dials. And that's the setup. In Roll Camera, you take on a major role in a film production and must shoot a quality film before time and money run out. You do that by assigning your crew to shoot scenes that are here in the storyboard and put them here in the editing room. The game ends when the editing room is filled with five completed scene cards. If at that point you have not run out of budget or schedule and your film's quality is outside this red zone of mediocrity, that is, it's either not bad or better or so bad it's great, then you win. If, however, at the end of the game, the quality is still in this mediocre red zone or if at any point in the game 
the budget or schedule moves into this red X, you lose the game. On your turn, you're going to roll your crew dice and assign them either to actions on the main game board, on your player board, or to set in the middle. This is how you shoot scenes, by arranging the crew according to the unique setup diagram on each scene card. But you can only place dice on blue spaces, not the white spaces. So you're going to need to build set pieces and arrange them on the set to help you complete the patterns. These nasty problem cards will regularly come up to get in your way, but luckily you have useful idea cards that you can play. You play idea cards either by holding a production meeting and pitching your ideas to other players, or by checking them off the to-do list down here. We'll, we'll get to that soon. The game is all about balancing your crew assignments to complete scenes against the various problems and ideas that come up, while carefully managing your budget, your schedule, and the film's quality. Let's take a look at how a turn works. If you're ever wondering what you're supposed to do on your turn, the turn sequence is listed right here on the budget and schedule dials, which you will always have in front of you when it's your turn. The turn sequence is 1. Draw a problem card, 2. Roll the crew dice, 3. Assign the crew dice to take actions, 4. Clear the crew dice, and 5. Advance the schedule by 1 and pass the dials to the next player. So the first thing we need to do is draw a problem. Problem cards have negative effects that either occur over the whole turn or trigger at a specific point, like at the end of a turn or when you shoot. If you don't resolve a problem and must draw another one, it pushes the current problem over into the next empty space. If a problem is resolved, it may create a gap, but problems never move back. They only move from left to right, as indicated by these red arrows. Also, the further right they go, the more difficult problems get to resolve. I'll explain how in a moment. If the problem queue is full, you don't need to draw another problem at the start of the turn. But then you also cannot take certain actions or bonuses that require drawing a problem, such as this action, get in turn, which requires drawing a problem as indicated here. If a problem card states to put a blocked token somewhere, use one of the blocked tokens as a reminder that that area is unavailable. This icon on the back of problem cards gives a little hint to what area the next problem will affect, helping you plan ahead a little bit. Problems can contradict or change other rules in the game. When in doubt, problem effects trump everything. Next up on our turn, we'll need to roll the crew dice. This will determine which cast and crew you have available to assign on your turn. Each die has the same six faces each face representing a particular department on the film's production. Camera, lighting, sound, art department, actors, and visual effects, or VFX. The VFX face is white because it is wild. It can count as any of the other faces, including when setting up for a scene and when taking actions. Now normally on your turn you'll roll all six of the crew dice, but it's possible that some of the dice have been locked in to set or to another action on a previous player's turn. I'll explain that in a moment. Just know that you might roll less than six dice at the beginning of your turn for that reason. However, at any point on your turn, you can choose to pick up and re-roll any dice that previous players have locked in, so you do always have access to all six dice on your turn. Okay, so we roll the crew, and now I've got to assign them to actions. You can assign dice to any available blue space. That includes on the main game board up here, here, and here on your player board, or on set pieces or this space on the set grid area. To take the action, place the required die or dice on the space, and then immediately activate the action or effect of that space. Different action spaces have different requirements. This one means that any one die of any face may be placed here to take this action. This means that any two dice of any face may be placed. This equals sign means that any two die of the same face, doubles, must be placed here, like these two cameras, for example. Remember that since VFX is wild, this would also work here. This one means that any three of the same face must be placed here, so you can see now what I meant, that problems get harder to resolve. This means that you can either place two dice of any face to take this action, or place one die and pay the indicated cost. Here you could use one die and pay one dollar, for example. Here, one quality. 
This means that only a die with this specific face can be placed here to take this action. For example, this space requires one art department. That goes for set pieces too. Here, for example, you may only place a camera. Remember that VFX can still be placed here, since it's wild, but it is still standing in for that face. VFX, placed on this set piece, only counts as camera. This space means that either one or the other face may be placed to take this action. In this case, either camera or actor. You can take as many actions on your turn as you have dice available, but if you took an action on your turn and the dice are still in that spot, then that space is blocked and you can't take that action again. If you can't or don't want to use all the dice on your turn, you don't have to. If you don't have the right combination of dice on your turn to complete an action, you can lock in dice for the next player to complete on their turn. For example, if I need three of a kind for this action, but I only have two, I could lock these in here and agree with the next player that on their turn they'll hopefully roll a camera or a VFX and be able to complete this action. Just remember that on their turn they could decide to unlock these dice, re-roll them, and reassign them somewhere else. After you've assigned your dice and taken your actions, you then clear all the dice off of their spaces except any that you'd like to keep locked in for the next turn. At this point, you would also clear any dice off of set pieces that you've already used to shoot a scene. More on shooting scenes later, just know that you clear the dice during this step, not directly after you shoot the scene. At the end of your turn, you always advance the schedule by lowering the dial one space. During the game, you might lose or gain budget and schedule for various reasons. For example, this means I lower the budget by one, while this means I should raise the schedule by one. Just turn the dial as indicated. But remember, if you ever need to turn the dial to either one of the X spaces here, indicated by shutdown production, you lose the game immediately. Now, hand the dials and the cleared dice to the next player. It's now their turn. Now let's go over what each of the action spaces actually do. And if you ever want a reminder during the game, just check the player aid card. This side briefly explains each of the shared main board actions here. And this side are the actions specific to your player board. Up here, these resolve actions let you remove a problem card that is in a corresponding slot. As I mentioned, they get progressively more difficult to resolve the longer you leave them active. When resolving a problem, take it out of the slot, turn it upside down, and slide it under the resolved problems area of the board. As indicated here, for every five problems you resolve, you get to choose an immediate bonus. Either gain $2 in your budget or gain one schedule. Then, put those resolved problems aside. In the unlikely event that you run out of problem cards, you can reshuffle these resolved problems into the new problem deck. This space allows you to choose one of two actions. Either build a new set piece, which costs $1, or rearrange the existing set pieces, which doesn't cost any budget. If you choose to build a new one, pay $1, and then take one of the two face-up set piece tiles on the stacks and place it in any available space on the set grid, rotated however you like. If you choose to build a new set piece, you can't move or rotate any that are already on set. If instead you choose to rearrange, you can move or rotate any number of set pieces that are already on the set grid. This action does not cost any budget. Set pieces must always fit inside the grid, and they cannot overlap each other. You can cover up the blue space on the set grid if you like, or you can use it to help you build your scenes. The get intern action allows you to change the face of any other unused dice to a different face of your choice. But you have to draw a problem card. Interns, am I right? <laughs> you have to be able to draw a problem to take this action. So you can't take this action if the problem queue is already full. Now remember the idea cards in your hand? They all have useful effects that can help you get through your film's production, but you have to imagine that the ideas in your hand are in your head. You can't just play these cards at any time. In fact, you can't talk about what's on your idea card specifically at all with the other players. To do that, you've got to pitch your ideas in a production meeting by taking that action on the main board here. When the production meeting action is taken, three idea cards are pitched, placed face up on the table at the same time. 
In a solo game, you pitch one idea from your hand and draw two at random from the top of the idea's deck. In a two-player game, each player pitches one idea and you draw a third at random from the deck. In a three-player game, each player pitches one idea. And in a four-player game, the active player picks which three players will pitch ideas. They can include themselves or not. All three idea cards are pitched at the same time. Then, the active player decides how to allocate the three cards. One of them is played immediately and activated, one of them is discarded without effect, and one can be saved for later. These three options are indicated here underneath the action space. For the idea card played immediately, activate its effect and then put the idea card in the idea's discard pile next to the deck here. For the discarded idea, just discard it with no effect. For the idea saved for later, you can place it in one of the two to-do list slots here. If there's already a card in the to-do list, you can choose to replace it with the new one, discarding the old one, or discard the new one if you want to keep the old one. Later, on the same turn, or on a future turn, you can use the action space above the slot to trigger that idea. Again, this means you would either place two dice or one die and pay this cost. Once you've activated an idea in the to-do list, it gets discarded. So just to recap, when the production meeting action is taken, three idea cards are pitched. One is played and activated immediately, one is discarded with no effect, and one can be saved for later. When deciding how to allocate the three ideas, feel free to discuss the pros and cons together as a team. But if it's your turn and you took the production meeting action, you make the final decision on what to do with them. After the production meeting, all players who pitched ideas should then immediately draw back up to three idea cards. Players should always have three idea cards in their hand. If the idea deck runs out, reshuffle the discard pile into a new face down deck of idea cards. You cannot look through the idea discard pile unless a specific action or card allows you to do so. Idea cards can alter the rules of the game, but remember that problem card effects override everything. So although you can't talk about what's on the idea cards in your hand, you are welcome and encouraged to say, hey, I have a good idea, you should hold a production meeting, even if it's not your turn. You could also, on your turn, ask players if anyone has any good ideas, and they could say whether they do or don't, without mentioning specifically what's on their cards. Side note, why? Why should you keep hidden from other players information that might help you win if you're all trying to work together? Well, you could definitely play the game with all your idea cards face up on the table, but with all the information public, you risk one player taking over everything and deciding what everybody should do on their turn. So having some hidden information gives everyone a way to contribute even when it's not your turn. But if you prefer to play with open hands, you certainly can. Aside from the main board, the other place you can assign dice on your turn is your player board. Each board has two unique actions and one common one, refresh. You can only play die on your player board on your turn. Each of the unique action spaces on the player boards are described in detail on the player aid card and in the rule book, so I won't go through each of them here. This player privilege here is just meant to encourage some silliness. They don't actually affect the gameplay. But if you don't decide as a group to ignore them before the game starts, then you must respect the powers that they grant. The final place you can assign dice on your turn is to set piece tiles on this central grid called set. This is how you will complete the patterns required by each scene card to shoot them. There is a default blue square on the grid which you can use in your setups or cover up with tiles. Either way, you can only place dice on blue spaces. So you will need to add new set pieces and rearrange the existing ones to create the necessary shapes to shoot. Just like real filmmaking, you will often reuse the same sets for different scenes. You'll notice that many set piece spaces have symbols on them. This symbol means that only a crew die with this face can be placed here. You do still have to place a die on this spot to shoot with it. This doesn't count by itself as a camera in your scene, for example. You can use VFX to stand in for that face, but only that face. VFX here couldn't stand in for actor, for example, only camera. This one means that if you place a die here that is used to shoot a scene, you gain one dollar in your budget after the scene is shot, and this one means you gain one quality. This one means you must draw a problem if a die is placed here when a scene is shot. 
if the problem queue is already full with problems, you can't use this space to shoot. This means that dice with the VFX face cannot be placed here. And this means that any die placed here is wild and can substitute for any other face. Here in the storyboard are the three scene cards available to you. The scenes in here can be discarded or moved by certain ideas, problems, and player powers during the game. You can choose any of these three scenes to shoot, but be aware that each slot has a different cost and or bonus associated with it. The scene in this top storyboard slot will cost you $4, but it will gain you one schedule. Shooting carefully costs more, but it saves you time in the long run. This middle one costs $3 to shoot, and this bottom one only costs two, but it will also cost you one quality. Rushing a scene will be cheaper, but it just won't be as good. When you set up for a scene, you can rotate your setup with respect to how it's printed on the scene card. For example, this would work. However, you cannot mirror flip the scene setup. This would not work. If you don't have all the dice you need on your turn to complete a scene, don't forget that you can lock dice into slots for the next player to complete on their turn. In that way, you can decide together as a group to start the setup of a scene on one turn and then finish it on a later one. Again, that does mean that the next player will have fewer dice to roll on their turn, but if that's you, don't forget that you can always unlock dice that were locked in in a previous turn, re-roll them, and reassign them somewhere else, as long as they haven't actually been used to complete that action. You don't need to fill all the blue spaces on the set pieces. You only need to complete the setup pattern on the scene card. If you've done that, you can shoot it. To shoot the scene, first pay the cost by adjusting the budget dial, and then either the schedule dial or quality marker, depending on the slot that the scene is in. Then flip the scene card over to its full color side and place it in the topmost editing room slot. Note that some cards and actions can rearrange the editing room, potentially creating gaps like this. When placing finished scenes, always look for the empty slot with the lowest number. If the scene you've shot features a quality bonus, like here, it will also be on the reverse side, and you immediately gain that bonus when it enters the editing room. Here, for example, is one quality symbol, so I would gain one quality on the track. If you shot the scene in the top storyboard slot, by removing it, you will reveal the next one. If you shot one from one of the other two slots, there will be a gap, which you now fill by pulling down cards from above it, as indicated by these arrows. Remember that at the end of your turn, when you take the clear dice step, you also remove all dice used to successfully shoot a scene, but leave the set pieces where they are. This is the quality track that measures the quality of your film. The quality marker will be bumped up and down throughout the game by various scenes, ideas, problems, and other effects, but it cannot go higher than cinematic masterpiece up here, and it cannot go lower than so bad it's great. If you ever need to lose quality to pay a cost for something, you must be able to do so in full. So, for example, if the quality marker was at so bad it's great, you would not be able to shoot the scene at the bottom of the storyboard because that slot requires losing one quality, and we're already at the bottom. The reverse isn't also true, though. You can still gain quality, even if the marker is already at Cinematic Masterpiece. As soon as the fifth scene enters the editing room, the movie is complete, and the game ends at the end of that turn. At the end of the final turn, you must still activate any problem effects which occur at the end of this turn, like this one. But you do not advance the schedule at the end of the last turn. You finished on time. Once the final turn is complete, then consult the script cards here to award any quality bonuses or penalties that might apply. After all, your film might be done and it might look great, but often it's the quality of the film's story that really determines its worth. As I mentioned at setup, the script is made of two halves put together. This creates the title for your film, as well as what the end game quality bonus and or penalty will be. Just to repeat, the script bonuses are only tallied up once the film is complete and the final turn is over. The script can be changed during the game by various ideas, problems, and player actions, but only the final script at the game's end counts for scoring. As you might have noticed, scenes come in five different colors, which roughly correspond to the thematic or emotional content of the scene. Purple for comedic, 
Blue for tragic. Yellow for sentimental. Green for dramatic. And red for violent. Each color is represented by an icon on the front and the back of each scene card. The script card's endgame bonus or penalty is applied according to the type and arrangement of these scene colors in the editing room. There are a few different icons which should be self-explanatory but are explained in more detail in the rulebook if you have questions. If after tallying up the script's endgame bonus and penalty, your quality marker is outside the red zone and you haven't run out of budget or schedule, congratulations, you win! And to celebrate, of course, you're going to need to premiere your film. Use the story cues here above each editing room slot to tell your interpretation of the story of the amazing film you've just completed. You can alternate between players or nominate one to spin the whole yarn. Bravo! If you want to play roll camera solo, all the rules are the same, but there are a couple cards that require two or more players. These cards are marked with this symbol, and if you draw them in your solo game, just discard them and draw another one. You can technically play roll camera with five or even six players since there are six total player boards. But with that many players, you should make sure that everyone is staying involved and included in the game, even when it's not their turn. Also, in a five or six player game, players should have a maximum of two idea cards in their hand, not three. If you're familiar with roll camera and you want a bit more of a challenge, try choosing one of these production company cards before your next game. These represent the production company you work for, making this film, and they each have their own unique quirks that alter the game's rules or add a new challenge. Some of the scenarios on these cards might conflict with other cards in the game. If that happens, production company cards overrule everything, including problems. And that's Roll Camera! I hope you have a lot of fun playing it, and we want to see the films you've made with Roll Camera, so we've got actual shiny unique award cards you can win. Head over to this URL, which is also in the description of this video, to learn more. If you have rules questions, feel free to leave a comment here on BGG and I'll be happy to answer them. All right, well, that's a wrap. Cut! How was that? Bad! Get!